Hello and welcome. Indian engineers and technologists have been driving capabilities in global corporations by doing innovative work back in India. Now, this has been happening for more than a decade. The question is, where is this going? How are we using the skills, knowledge, and capability that we've developed as a country in these two decades to deliver something beyond for large global corporations serving very, very discerning customers? Well, to discuss that, I'm joined by Pari Natarajan, CEO of Zinov, a consulting company that brings companies to India to essentially mine the capabilities that we have here, but he calls himself an innovative arbitrageur. Thank yeah. you very much for joining us, Pari. So if you were to go to the second layer, I mean, yeah. as you look at the talents that have been created or the capabilities that have been uh, built over the last few years, how is this delivering you know, more specific impact and to whom? Yeah, so if you look at, we can take industry after industry. Let's take the telecom equipment industry, mm -hmm. right? A company like Ericsson has set up an artificial intelligence machine learning center of excellence in India, mm. which is solving complex data science problem faced by their customers mm. from the center here. And the center here works across business units of Ericsson mm. globally. That's an example in telecom. Mm. If you take banking, a uh, lot of the banks are now running their intelligent automation, not just RPA, but mm. driving automation of the business process using machine learning and AI mm. from the India center. Mm -hmm. So we see these are examples where companies are taking leadership in area which is new to the company. Mm. Unlike taking something which you've been working on for the last 20 years and say, hey, I will manage it for you, rather than say, hey, these are new things for the company, we are building the skills first, mm. and that way we'll take leadership. And, and this is because people have invested or have seen investments in teams and skills for now a good and clear two decades. Correct. So right now, uh, they don't question the execution capability of the center, mm. right? And when there are new skills coming in, let's say blockchain, mm. Everywhere in the world, everybody has to learn at the same time because it's new. Mm. And the fact that we have a million engineer coming out of college is easier for us to learn faster compared to any other location. Mm. And that's why we have been driving a lot of our customers, hey, let's take ownership on some of the new areas and drive that out of India. Right. So uh, as we look ahead now, if you were to look at the capabilities that have been created and the potential that those capabilities can drive, yeah. how would you define so, the challenge and the opportunity ahead? So our view is um, the India centers have been set up as a parent-child mm. relationship. Right? There's a headquarter and then you know, you, there is a center which is reporting back into the headquarter. But if companies want to be truly global, they've got to spread their headquarters. Mm. And our view is the GCCs can potentially be the second headquarters for a company in US or Europe. For that, you need different kind of leadership. Right? And we have two kinds of leadership. The leadership, one is administrators. So they, they do what is required to run the center effectively with the right cost and, and so on, which is what is called alignment. Right? Mm. They use the word alignment. I'm aligned to the global team. Mm. But what we are looking for is leaders with ambition, mm. with ambition that I'm going to make this the second headquarters. I'm going to build the new business units for the company, which is going to create the next $10 billion of revenue. Mm. For that, you need intrapreneurial leaders, right? Mm. And that's what the next year of wave of growth will going to come from centers which are led by intrapreneurs we're mm. taking those ambitions which are not given to them, but they're taking those So initiatives. explain to me how, because you know, if yeah. I look at it from outside, when you say that, can I put a revenue target for a GCC head sitting in India, yeah. who's really delivering to, let's say, a large detail giant or uh, in the US yeah. or Europe, how, yeah. how does that work or could that work? So I'll give you an example. Like, um, so right now, and take retail as an example. So much of data which, in, which is being created, they have a lot of consumer data. They have no idea in terms of what they need to do with the data. The India Center has IT, they have BPO, they have shared fun functions, they have access to data from all different sources. Mm. Now what if the center can create a new business model, new data monetization based business model, which is a new revenue stream for the company using all the data which they have mm. access to. Mm. That is something India is uniquely positioned to deliver compared to any other location in the world. The fact that because all functions are here. Mm. So uh, and, that's an and, example. Right. So you're saying the data in itself is a product that can be sold. Exactly. But what about the data that's telling the retailer how its consumers are doing and is our GCCs or people sitting here able to use that to actually generate new leads and new revenue? Correct. So that is the current motion, okay. right? So the yeah. current motion is how do I use this data to make my company better hmm. in terms of customer service, operational hmm. efficiency and so on. There, the Nick, that's where they're setting up data science labs and machine learning labs to drive that. Mm. But the next wave is how do I now take that and create a business mm. for the company which can create several billions of dollars. And if you take Google and other internet companies, that's how they, they make revenue. But right. the traditional enterprises could also potentially make. Right. So you're saying data is a separate sort of business source, uh, business revenue center, uh, apart from whatever else that the company is doing, it may be 
you know, running a, a, a automotive a re a leasing operation or a... You got it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Or, or a retail channel. Correct. So if you look ahead, so you pointed out some of the challenges. Uh, yeah. And you said that there's, uh, it, it's in the kind of leadership, in the leadership investment. Correct. What are the other challenges and opportunities and, and how big is it? So we call one other challenge as, um, you know, satisfied um, uh, mediocrity. Mm -hmm. right? what, it, what it means is you have teams are structured in matrix organization. Uh, the teams here report into somebody, somebody here. If the expectation of the, the team in the US is very low for the team here, and the team is happy with that expectation, then both are operating at a mediocre level. Mm. So that is a big challenge faced by multiple companies because the country here doesn't really have ownership of all the teams. Mm. The teams report globally. Mm. You have to inspire the team to break away from that and have their own ambition in terms of reaching the potential. I think that's a big challenge we have at a middle management level at GCCs. Right, and, and uh, you know, and, and sort of supplementing my question on how big it can get, I mean, there is also the possibility of competition within, yeah. within Asia or uh, maybe in uh, Eastern Europe Correct. or from Eastern Europe. Yeah. Uh, I think I, I heard you saying somewhere that, you know, there is a brand problem. Yeah. Know, because we are seen as the back office, the East Europeans are seen as mathematicians, Correct. the Israelis are seen as a startup nation. So these are all people who could eat our lunch. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And Eastern Europe is a real uh, competition mm -hmm. because the perception of the talent there is very high, mm -hmm. right? And that's how they've done a great job with that. Mm -hmm. And and also, um, um, China is not a competition right now because of IP and other issues, but other parts of Southeast Asia is also a competition. So those are key locations we've got to watch out for the next few years. And, and, and finally, how do we, what do we sort of, if we were to set a three or four point agenda target for ourselves to yeah. build this capability and really develop it further, what would it be? Right. So one is global influence. Mm. So the leadership here should be able to influence the company, mm. not just the bosses acro across. Second, we've got to set a target for our engineers, not mm. saying I'll be as productive as my global team, mm. but I'll be 2x productive as global team. Set mm. very high targets in terms of what they can achieve. Mm. Third is be entrepreneur in the company and then take ideas to market mm. right from, from India based on what is India uniquely positioned and drive that charter. And fourth is ensure that India leadership team is part of the global talent pipeline. Mm. When a company is looking for, hey, I'm looking for the next 10 VPs, the India leadership team should be trying to get into that roles as well. So India should be a talent pipeline for the company. So these are the right. three or four things right. we and believe. And absolutely, last question. So you know, yeah. you mentioned the Ericsson uh, example. Well, what's the one other example that you've seen in the last year that has really excited you in terms of the opportunities ahead? Uh, the other example will be um, a blockchain initiator mm -hmm. from Broadridge. So very interesting the way they did that, right? Before even the company realized blockchain is going to be important, the center here understood what the trends of the industry is. Mm. They invested in creating blockchain capability in the organization. And by the time the company realized last year, hey, blockchain is becoming important, and where do we need to set up? There were like 50 people already here, ready to be able to take ownership and deliver innovation on the technology. Mm. That is almost like, you know, even before the company realizes, you have a view in terms of where the industry is going to move, and you're building expertise. And when that is ready, you're, you're going after that and you're building the next set of innovation. So that's another example. It's a great note to end on. Thank you so much, Pai, for speaking with us. Thanks, Gohan. Thank nice you. meeting you. Thank you.